This video is sponsored by Playster, the world's first all-in-one entertainment app for comics, movies, music, games, and more. Craven's Last Hunt, written by J.M. DeMatisse with art by Mark Zeck, is one of the most praised Spider-Man stories ever told. And since we're doing a month of videos about spider-themed characters for Webruary, Get it? I think this would be a great place to start by analyzing the story, explaining the history of how it got made, and going into a bit of the psychology behind Craven's tortured mind. Now, if you haven't read the story, here's a quick recap. Sergei Kravinov, aka Craven the Hunter, defeats Spider-Man and buries the body. Craven dons a copy of Spider-Man's black suit and sets off on his quest. You see, defeating Spider-Man doesn't just mean besting him in combat, not to Craven, anyway. He has to become Spider-Man, a better version of Spider-Man, a superior spider- well, okay, that's a little confusing, but you get my point. He takes down some criminals pretty easily, but any hero could do that. Craven needs a real test. Serendipitously, a villain known as Vermin is terrorizing New York. Spider-Man fought him once before, but needed the aid of Captain America to take Vermin down. Craven sees this as his golden opportunity. If he can take down Vermin by himself, then he would truly be the better Spider-Man. And he does just that. But soon after Spider-Man rises from his grave, Craven didn't kill him, but only shot him with a tranquilizer and buried him alive. Spidey goes to confront Craven, but the hunter doesn't put up a fight. Instead, he brings Peter to a captured vermin where he has the two of them fight. Spider-Man does not fare well. Just as Vermin is about to beat him, Craven stops the fight and lets Vermin leave. Sergei Kravinov has proved his point. He really is the better Spider-Man. Spidey chases after Vermin, swearing to return for Kraven once he captures the creature. In the sewers, Spider-Man proves to himself that he can defeat Vermin on his own, re-establishing that he is the true Spider-Man. Meanwhile, Kraven, satisfied with his final hunt, puts the barrel of a rifle in his mouth and pulls the trigger. During both Spider-Man and Kraven's funerals, a modified excerpt from William Blake's poem, The Tiger, is written out, with Tiger replaced with Spider. Quote, Spider, Spider, burning bright, in the forests of the night, what immortal hand or eye dare frame thy fearful symmetry? The poem begins and ends with this line, much how the story is bookended by two funerals which feature these words. Fearful symmetry was also what De Matisse called this story initially. It was Jim Salakrup who came up with the title Craven's Last Hunt. The story of a hero being defeated by a villain and then rising from the grave was something De Matisse had pitched frequently for years, both at Marvel and DC. Initially, it was supposed to be a Wonder Man miniseries, with Grim Reaper standing in for Craven. Later, it was pitched again as a Batman story, where the Joker finally kills the Dark Knight and, without Batman to fight against, goes sane. But during this time, DC already had a Batman Joker story in the works, one story on which we've made four separate videos, a story called The Killing Joke. And since Dave Matisse's story seemed to conflict with Alan Moore's, DC dismissed the going sane story, but only temporarily. About a decade later, Dave Matisse was able to tell that story in Batman Legends of the Dark Knight, number 65 through 68. Craven's Last Hunt was also pitched as a story between Batman and Hugo Strange, where Strange would take on the role of Batman, but eventually, Dave Matisse found himself writing Spider-Man and thought this story would be perfectly suited for the Web Slinger. Without a specific villain in mind, he set out to create a new one. However, he was flipping through a Marvel Universe handbook and came across a character named Kraven, who Dave Matisse immediately knew was the perfect enemy for the story. Now this far into the video, you're probably wondering why I'm wearing this jacket. Uh, well, you see, the story of Kraven's Last Hunt features a couple themes about costumes and identity and differing perceptions. And costumes and clothing in general can have a significant impact on how people act. It doesn't just affect how others see you, but also how you see yourself and how you behave. This idea is called enclosed cognition. And there was a pretty interesting social psychology study about this from 2012. In the first test, researchers challenged participants with simple brain games. They explained to one group of participants, thank you so much for coming in and agreeing to participate in this study. We actually did have a group of people come in the other day when the building was under construction. Um, and to protect their clothing, we had them wear these white coats. And we just want to keep the test consistent between each go and eliminate as many variables as possible. So uh, would you mind just putting this on when you do your test? 
Of course, this was a clever lie. The other group did the tests in the normal clothes they walked in wearing. You see, the researchers wanted to observe how the participants performed while wearing one of these snazzy white coats, which is often associated with scientists or doctors. What they found was that participants wearing the white coats made half as many mistakes as those who wore their everyday outfits. This makes sense when we look at the world of superheroes. When superheroes suit up in their costumes, it's expected that they act differently than their non-costumed counterpart, especially if they have a secret identity. Superman acts differently than Clark Kent, Bruce Wayne, than Batman, even Peter Parker and Spider-Man have slightly different personalities. The costume is transformative, turning the wearer into the hero. But the study went a little further. In another test, the researchers aimed at studying the impact clothing has depending on how the wearer perceives it. Participants were split into groups again to perform more of these simple tests. This time, everyone was wearing one of these coats. However, one group was told they were wearing lab coats, while another group was told they were wearing painter's smocks. The group who was told they had the lab coat still made fewer mistakes, even though everyone was wearing the same kind of coat. This topic is still being studied, so skepticism is warranted, but it's still interesting to think how it relates back to Craven's last hunt. We see in the story that while Peter and Craven both wear the same Spider-Man costume, they perceive the role very differently. Craven puts on the suit and is transformed into the inhuman creature he believes Spider-Man to be. Craven focuses on the spider with its cold, animalistic nature. But Peter focuses on the man, a being who's compassionate, civilized, and just as human as anyone else. In this way, the story does a great job at exploring the duality of Spider-Man. Craven even addresses them separately throughout the story as two distinct entities, Spider and Man. This is why the character of Vermin is vital to the story. Dave Matisse explained that Vermin was, quote, the pivotal element, providing the contrast between Peter Parker's vision of Spider-Man and Craven's distorted mirror image, end quote. Vermin serves as a stand-in, an analogy. Craven calls him, quote, the perfect fusion of man and animal. End quote. Yet, while the hunter, true to form, only sees a beast in vermin, Peter sees the man buried underneath the creature's outward appearance, similar to how Peter himself is a man underneath the mask of Spider-Man, a being, he says, doesn't really exist. He's, quote, a myth, a lie. Oh, sure, it'd be great if putting on a costume could miraculously change the man underneath, but it can't. Except, maybe it can. Once again, this video is sponsored by Playster. Playster is the world's first all-in-one entertainment app featuring unlimited streaming for one low monthly fee. An all-inclusive membership with comics, movies, games, music, TV shows, books, and audiobooks is only $24.95 per month. But if you don't need all that, they also offer an unlimited subscription to comics, books, and audiobooks for only $9.95 per month. No limits, no credits, just enjoy. They have comics like Lock and Key, Transformers, Judge Dredd, Samurai Jack, and so much more for your eyes to behold. They're great people and they're offering you, the NerdSync viewer, a free 30-day unlimited subscription to everything they have to offer. Link in the description down below. Definitely go check it out. And if you want more Spider-Man videos, we've got a whole playlist right here that you can check out, starting with the amazing origin and history of his black costume that he was wearing in Craven's Last Hunt. Definitely worth a watch. And if you want, go ahead and hit that big sexy subscribe button. My name is Scott, reminding you to read between the panels and grow smarter through comics. See ya.